another video friends a reading vlog and happy lunar new year happy chinese new year and welcome to the year of the rabbit in this video i am trying my best to connect with my chinese culture as we welcome in the new year and the year of the rabbit as the daughter of a immigrant first generation like chinese american mixed with a american white father growing up I was not immersed in Chinese culture, really, other than living with my mom, who is Chinese and from Hong Kong. Very recently, I've been learning and accepting that to be the child of an immigrant and living in America and not having grown up immersed in Chinese culture, that it takes a lot of work and commitment to learn and practice your traditions and your heritage and for many many years many years i've felt really guilty and not enough like not chinese enough not asian enough and it's a constant struggle that i am working through but i've learned and accepted that i only know what i know and it is not my fault at all or even my mother's fault that i am not as Asian or Chinese enough as I wish to be and honestly that kind of like black and white negative thinking is something I'm really trying to let go of and also being a mixed person a mixed race Chinese American I struggle being in that in-between space of being Chinese and Asian and also you know my American and my white and my English uh, ancestry on my dad's side. I am so proud of being mixed and it has so many beautiful aspects of it and I would never change it for the world but it definitely brings struggles. So all I can do and all I can try and do is just put in the effort, make the effort to connect with my heritage and my culture, and just seeing other mixed race and Asian American people who have similar struggles as me, seeing them, you know, put in the work and and put language to that it is work, that this is not easy, that that kind of inspires me. I'm seeing that so much in Lunar Love, which is our book for this video, which I'm really excited to be reading and also sharing this reading journey with you guys so I can show more of my just culture and connect with that more. We're reading Lunar Love by Lauren Kung Jessen. And I love the fact that in her biography, like in the back, it says she is a mixed race Chinese American writer. I love that so much. That's something I've been talking about in therapy is that, you know, I've just thought about, you know, if I'm introducing myself to people, maybe I should start saying, I'm Sheila, I'm, you know, a mixed race, you know, person, archivist writer, creator, whatever. So seeing that modeled to me by this author is very inspiring. So our book is about a mixed race girl named Olivia who is taking over her popo's matchmaking business. So popo is grandmother, your maternal grandmother in Cantonese. My grandmother on my mom's side is my popo. So I have a popo, which is a grandmother and a gungun, which is grandfather on my mother's side. So in our book, our main character is taking over her popo's matchmaking business, which is rooted in Chinese zodiac. And upon taking on this new business, our main character, Olivia, 
finds that there's this new hot and new dating app out on the market that is also rooted in the Zodiac. So Olivia feels like her business idea, her, her Popo's business idea has been stolen, taken right under from her, and she is at war with that. And to thicken the plot even more, the creator of this new dating app is LA's most eligible bachelor and somebody that Olivia met before knowing who he was and what he does in a very meet cute situation. We have a enemy to lovers trope going on in this book. <laughs> As always, I always seem to read those kinds of books. So Olivia and this guy make a deal with each other. They are going to try and find a match for the other person using their approach, their matchmaking approach, Olivia with her traditional Zodiac matchmaking and this guy with his new dating app. And whoever falls in love loses. <laughs> How fun. So overall, this book explores the theme of trying to hold on tr to tradition in a very fast changing modern world, which is very much like the epitome of Chinese culture. You always have this clash of the tradition and the modern world. You see that so much in families, especially now Days. That's something I am also seeing as I learn to connect with my culture and just seeing how my mom does things and my family when I've been with them, my Chinese family. So it is so interesting what we have here and I'm so excited to share this book with you guys. I, I started reading this book last night and I'm 100 pages in. It's been very easy and fun to read and I'm quickly falling in love with the whole story and the characters and I'm really excited to see where this story takes us. I've also been trying to take time to learn more about Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year and kind of the traditions specific to my heritage as a Chinese person. So I've been putting notes and writing things in my Hobonichi in hopes of just learning it and trying to practice it as much as I can. I know that family and food are big themes that are celebrated during this time of the year and that Lunar New Year is just not one day of celebrating. It's like a full like calendar month of celebrations and I haven't done really any of the prep work leading up to Lunar New Year, like this actual New Year's Day, but I've hoping to learn more about that and practice that as we move into you know <laughs> the future and next year but i definitely want to practice traditions and kind of follow the superstitions of no cleaning because if you clean or sweep or wash your clothes or wash your hair on new year's day you are sweeping away all the good luck that has come into you during this new year so we're not doing any cleaning <laughs> no hair washing no haircuts nothing of that sort i did some research into what like the luckiest foods are and trying to adapt them into my own kind of diet without having to go into exhaustion trying to learn and cook and prep when this is all new to me so I think that's the fun in learning a new tradition or trying to incorporate it into your life trying to blend the American and Chinese side of things and these are things I really hope to pass on to <laughs> potential future Sheila generations. I'm thinking about that constantly and I think that's a motivating factor to help somebody, especially me, connect with their culture and put the time into that. Fish is definitely a major kind of like lucky food for Chinese New Year so I'm gonna have fish tonight but I think I'm gonna make vegetable stir fry for lunch. Just do my like fish dinner <laughs> tonight and I was gonna make some other kind of like veggie type foods as well but yeah we're going in on the cooking today and I'm really excited so off to make some stir fry Forgot to press my tofu, so now we're pressing it. <laughs>
my lazy girl sauce hack is just to buy store-bought sauce I really love the sesame garlic sauce rice is done and if you don't have pre-bought sauce I feel like just putting soy sauce in this would be really all you need and maybe some like ginger or cumin spices but really like the natural flavors of the vegetables being stir-fried that's all you need Stir fry is done. I'm going to serve some for my lunch. Yay! And we can't forget the sriracha. Of course, we need to add some spring onions. And I'm using George's one piece chopsticks that came with this ramen bowl that I got for him because I can't find the other chopsticks. Seems appropriate to use fancy one piece chopsticks. Food is done, dishes are in the dishwasher. I am sitting down to do some reading. Just reading for the rest of the day. Well, reading for the rest of the afternoon until it's dinner time, and then more reading after that. I'm really enjoying just making food, and that's kind of the only focus for today, and relaxing and celebrating. So, let's do some major reading sprints. It's getting pretty juicy. I've had some jaw dropping moments so far and I'm really enjoying the story. So let's continue. I'm done with my first official sprint. I did an hour sprint and just set a timer for an hour, but this book is so heartwarming. I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm on page 195. So a little over, over halfway through. finish this book in two days guys two days welcome to the end of the video where I share my final thoughts 
on Later Love after finishing it and taking some time to let it sink in and uh, I just really really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four out of five stars. First and foremost just love the mixed race representation within the story itself with the characters but also our writer and how in her acknowledgement she really touched on how it was important for her to have a mixed race character characters and just see that more in books tv movies as a mixed person growing up you just didn't see people that looked like you and i want people readers and people to know that mixed people exist that we have stories and those stories need to be heard and uplifted and i think my favorite part of this book again outside of the story is the dedication the dedication is for those who are also mixed and have felt like they aren't enough or don't belong. You are and you do. Thank you, <laughs> Lauren Kung Jessen, for writing this book for me and for all my other mixed brothers and sisters out there because I definitely feel seen and touched with this book and the characters in it and I want to see more of that in my reading. All in all, very heartwarming story. It was so cute. It was like a rom-com type story and I was giggling. There were some shocking moments, some heartwarming moments, and overall just a lovely romance love story. And again, I love how the author incorporated the Chinese zodiac and the matchmaking dating aspect into the story that was something different and new for me to read in a book and the whole like tradition versus modernity with the old matchmaking way of things and the new online dating way of things and just how that's just a big metaphor for old and new generations and chinese generations thank you friends for coming along for this reading vlog and journey of me connecting with my culture more as somebody who does not love cooking somebody who is trying to enjoy cooking i for me like in cooking during this video and incorporating my culture into that was really fun and good for me and i want to infuse that more into my life and this year as we continue after this video so thank you guys for giving me the space and allowing me to feel safe to show up and do something and share something that I at times struggle with being in between in this third culture and this mixed person who doesn't feel quite this and doesn't feel quite this. Uh, it's really important for me to share this aspect of my life because I know there are other people, other mixed people out there who are struggling with what I am struggling with and are looking to feel seen and see other people out there with similar stories and backgrounds. I send my love to this author and if any of you have felt seen or connected in this video as well, I just, I feel like my job is done. Officially two books down for 2023 and that means I have 30, 31 more books to read for this year because my goal is 33 books. So I think we're doing a pretty good job getting two books finished during the month of January. I'm excited for all the other books that I want to read this year because there are so many books, so many good books that I want to read. <sighs> all right, friends, again, thank you for being here and I will see you in the next video. Bye.